trusted God. Some of us even trusted people and had faith in people. And we thought this thing is going to come to pass. And it never came to pass. And our faith is wounded. And, and that's why we trust God half. Sometimes we trust Him. But we always have a plan B with God. May your faith receive healing tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, may your faith receive healing tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God's delays are not his denials. Amen. Amen. Now, in a few minutes that's left for me, allow me just to go into the word of God tonight. We're in our faith season. And this faith thing is not leaving me. So allow me to stay in it. Amen. Amen. Um, I've, I've come to learn that, do you know that many accidents happen in places that you're familiar to? Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, many times when I'm driving from Brenda, it's very early hours of the morning, uh, or when I'm tired, I'm very alert. The moment I get to Melin, because I've arrived at familiar territory, uh, the sleep starts to hit me. And you see the car starts going. But from Venda, you know, from Cardscorp, I was very focused because I was driving on unfamiliar territory. Amen? Amen. And another and thing about this, God said to me, <laughs> It is, it is in many familiar scriptures that we don't see God. Okay. Because we are too familiar with the scriptures. Yeah. You know, and we just read the scriptures and pass. Some of, some of it, we don't, even, we don't even take time to read certain words because we, we know it. We are too familiar with it. Amen? And, 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 and God says, do not be too familiar with my word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not be too familiar with my word because my word... You might read the same scripture, but I will give you a new revelation every day. Amen. I will give you a new anointing every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what killed the Israelites because they began to be too familiar with God. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And God help us in the church that we are not too familiar with God. Amen. 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 That's why every Sunday we come here and say, Pam says, Pam, Pam. It's the same song, but it is a different anointing every yeah, Sunday. True. But it's the same song. Yeah. Amen. Therefore, even when your faith needs to grow, you still hear the same word. Amen? Yeah. But it brings a different vitamin in you. Oh, I feel I need to say that again. You hear the same word, but it brings a different vitamin in you. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want us to, to go to the word tonight. Tonight we're going to speak about faith that changes situations. Amen. Faith that changes situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's start here. Let's start from Acts chapter 20. Um, New King James Version. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read about three scriptures. Acts chapter 20. And um, Let's read verse 22 for the sake of time because we've got many, many scriptures. If you're a visitor, just stand when you see us standing. It's our culture in the church to stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Acts chapter 20, uh, the verse number. Uh, let's start from verse 20, actually. Let's start from verse 20. Let's start from verse 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 20. And we're going to end in verse number 22. Okay, let's read together. Let's go one, two. How I had back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you, and taught you publicly, and from house to house. Verse 21. Testifying to Jews, and also to Greeks, repentance towards God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 22. And sin, now I go out in the spirit of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. 23. Ministry 
that I have received from the Lord Jesus. And I must finish this ministry. And I must finish it with with joy. And this ministry it is, is to testify the gospel of the grace of God. But the problem is, I need to do this ministry in the midst of things. Hello? I am not doing this ministry in the absence of things. I am doing this ministry. And what are these things? I've got tribulations. I've got chains. Hello? And many other things that are waiting for. But I need to go to Jerusalem because if I leave, if I depart without going to Jerusalem, my ministry is incomplete. But I wanted to tell you something. None of these things move me. And I asked Paul, what are you moved of? He says, I am moved by the ministry that the Lord Jesus Christ has, has Amen. deposited in me. Amen. Hello? Amen. Before we get carried away, let's, let's. Ecclesiastes 8 4. New King James Version, Ketani. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Let's all say Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 8 4. Preach this scripture many times. Go. Find the way of the king is and his power. And who may say to him, Why are you doing? Let's read it together as a concert. Let's go one, two. Where the way of the king is, there is his power. And who may say to him, Why are you doing? King James Version. Daniel chapter 3, verse number 27. Daniel chapter 3, verse number 27 to 29. Might as well read verse 30. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw this man. On whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of, the, of their hair was, was not seen, no, no way they, no way their garment affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed, who sent his angel and delivered his servant, who trusted him, and they have frustrated the king's word. Is that the new King James Version? Read with the King James Version. Yeah. King James Version, please. Media team, please move with us. You are still on verse 27. Verse 28, please. Speak to me and speak through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. We may take our seats tonight. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we all know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you, if, you, if you read from verse 1 or if you're familiar with scripture, scripture will tell you um, from verse number 1 um, that it presents to us uh, this king by the name of King uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, who, who decides to make uh, what we call uh, in a golden image. And uh, verse number one will then present to you the measurements and whatnot of how the golden image was. 
but one thing that is also very peculiar that I've learned here is that he does not invite everybody else to uh, to come and worship this image. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now the Bible says he set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon, and 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 what he does now, King, King Nebuchadnezzar, he then invites his subordinates. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. He, he invites his subordinates, and the Bible. That presents to you, it says he invites, number one, he invites the prince, the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, now I want you to understand this before we, we get into this. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, he set up the image himself. Okay. It was not set up by God. He, he, he set it up himself. Now, now, something that, that, that shocked me here is that he invites the princess. Yeah. Hello? And he's the king. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Now, if we, then if we have talked about princesses and he is the king, mm. uh, which means this is his family. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And, and number two, he invites the governors. Who places the governors in power? The king. The king. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And he invites the sheriffs. He is the one that he, every if you check the category of the people that he invited, is people that he himself put in power. Yeah. Hello? Amen. I don't know that you're hearing me. Yes. He he invites the people that he himself put in power. Yeah. Hello? And 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 he, he then gives them an instruction that those people must then take a word to everybody. Hear me? Yeah. They must take a word to everybody that at the sound of the trumpet and the harp and the cymbals, as soon as you hear the sound, every person must bow. Yeah. Hello? Amen. No, but one thing peculiar here, he does not invite kings to bow. Yeah. But he only speaks to his subordinates. Are you with me? Yes. You, 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 you will understand this now. He invites people that he knows that these people, number one, they are afraid of him. Yeah. If they don't bow, he, he will take away the power. Yeah. Come on. Have, you, have you ever been in a relationship with people that they think they've got information about you yeah. and they're holding it and, and, and they will want you to do anything that they want you to do. Yeah. If you don't bow, I release and you end up not living your life. And some of you are here tonight. You can't live to your full potential because you've got a kingdom. You've got a kingdom as a friend. You've got a kingdom as a colleague. Hello, somebody. Look at your friend. Maybe it's kingdom He he invites the people that these people must be the ones to spread the message. Hello? Amen. But but the shocking thing is that King, King Nebuchadnezzar, you only know those that bow to you. Yeah. But you don't know that in this country there are certain people that do not bow to you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Now Ecclesiastes presents to us verse, chapter 8 verse number 4 that where the word of the king is yeah. there's, power. there's power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. Power. Now, where the word of a king is, there is power. Amen? So, which means when the king is speaking, he must not be insecure. The king must be able to speak out of a position of authority and does not doubt. If you have faith, as the master said, you can speak as I spoke in the beginning, that let there be light. You can speak to the mountain and say, mountain, go yonder to the sea. Because as you speak, you speak out of a position of being a king. And where the word of a king is, there must be power. Amen. No, you don't shout. You speak out of power. Somebody shout and say power. Power. Somebody shout and say power. Power. Now, if King Nebuchadnezzar, chief, chief, if you are speaking out of power, then you must even invite your contemporaries. 
to power. Yeah. Because you are not scared of their power. Mm. Because you speak out of position. Yeah. Amen. Okay. I'm just passing there. Now, you know the story that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, while, while they were brought to, to bow, the Bible says they decided not to bow. Hello? Amen. Which therefore means that when you operate in faith, you can, and we've already talked about this, you can operate in faith minus decision. Because faith is a. You guys don't listen to me when I preach. Faith is a what? It's a decision. You must make a decision if you want to operate in faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Now, the Bible says that. Then the authorities came and said, there are certain Jews who are defiling your decree. You have instructed that every man should bow. Every person should bow. But there are certain Hebrew boys that are not bowing. Now, you must understand, by this time, these boys are just ordinary people. But they are not bowing to the image. Now, to cut the long story short, because for the sake of time, the Bible says they did not bow, and they were brought in front of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he even had a conversation with them. That you guys, I have released a decree, and you are still not bowing. We're going to have the sound of the trumpet again. You must bow to this image. And they answered to the king and said, Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, with all due respect, king, we respect you so much, but the, the decision that we have made, it still stands. We will not bow because the God that we serve is able to deliver us. Amen. Even if he does not deliver us, yeah, yeah, still. but we will still not bow. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Can we converse here? You, you, you are serving an almighty God. Hello? We are saving God. Why do you then say, even if he does not deliver us? Why? You remember Jesus when he was in Gethsemane? He prayed. And he said, let this cup pass over me. Hello? Amen. Let this cup pass. But if it is your will, yeah. let your will be done. Amen. At the end of the day, your will must be done. Hello? Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were actually saying, we, are, we do not belong to ourselves. Okay. I don't know whether you're hearing me. Yeah. We are not of our own. When we gave our lives to God, we did not give our lives half. Yeah. We gave our lives fully to God. If God has, you must understand, King Nebuchadnezzar, it is not up to you to decide when we die. It is not up to you to decide when our life ends. If, if God wills that our lives must end today, therefore we will still die for the faith. But bowing, we will not bow. Shake your neighbor as a neighbor. Bowing, we will not bow. The Bible says, they say, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this penny ferris and he will deliver us from thine hand, O king. And, and you will know that the God that they serve never showed up when they were speaking to the king. And scripture tells us that the king gave an instruction that the, the burning furnace must be rekindled seven times. And the, the, the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire. Hello? Amen. They were thrown into? Into the fire. Into the fire. And, and, and scripture tells us that when they were in the fire, then the fourth man appeared. Hey. And we've talked about this. That the fourth man was already in the fire waiting. Hey. Hey. Hello? Amen. You must understand that Jesus, he's already in your storm waiting for you to arrive. Yeah. Yeah. He already knows what is going to happen to you tomorrow. Amen. That's why he has prepared enough strength for you. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. Now, the Bible says the fourth man appeared and then King the kingdom Nebuchadnezzar says, Hey man, did we not throw the three men? Why then do I see a fourth man? Now, just just just, just give me you King James version of the same scripture then. Because there's something there that King Nebuchadnezzar says. He says, Look, he answered, 
I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not heads and the form and the form of the fourth is like the son of God this must tell you that this king might be evil but he knows God because no one tells him who is there but he is the one that announces to the people that this one that I see this is not an ordinary person this must be a, this is a form he even knows the form of the son of God this, this, is, this must be the son of God let me tell you something when you enter your storm when you enter your fire you won't need to announce who is delivering you he will announce himself when he steps in your enemies will know who has stepped in he says the fourth one that I see that is like the son of God hallelujah Amen. now he then he then says these guys must be released take them out but something that is amazing is that when they are called out the fourth man does not come out <laughs> and I I had to have a conversation with the fourth man yeah. why don't you come out and the fourth man says I dwell in your fire yes. because that's where I operate excellently <laughs> I, I can't operate in the absence of your fire. Hey. And, so, and I said, fourth man, why are you dwelling in a fire? And he says, you know what? Because in life you move from one fire to another. <laughs> so when you move from this fire and, and we take you out and you feel life is good now, everything is fine. You better be expected. Another fire is coming and you will find me in another fire. Hey. Shake your neighbor to neighbor. neighbor. Your fire is coming. Never make a mistake of laughing at someone who's going through the fire. Yeah, yeah. It's a story for another day. Now, this is the gist of the matter now. When these men were delivered and taken out of the fire, remember we're talking about faith that changes situations. Hello? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow. But the, chief, the situation never changed. They said, the God that we serve will, will, is able to deliver us. Even when they spoke about their God, the situation never changed. They said, the God that we serve will, will deliver us from this burning furnace. Even after they said that, the burning the, the furnace was rekindled seven times. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the neighbor. neighbor. Your faith, your faith. is not faith. Without your commitment. Without your commitment. And the challenge with commitment is that commitment is not only seen in your word without your action. And many, many a times, most of us are able to pronounce faith, but are not committed to the faith. No, we speak about faith, we've got a relationship with the faith, but we don't have a commitment with the faith. And how do we see this? You've got a relationship with the faith when all is going well. But let me tell you something. Your commitment in the faith is never tested until tribulations come. Your commitment in the faith is never tested until the Benny Ferris is rekindled seven times. Then your commitment must be tested. And when your Benny Ferris is rekindled seven times, many of us start having conversations with King Nebuchadnezzar and says, you know what? Actually, I never thought. Actually, I made a mistake. Actually, this is what I wanted to say. I did not mean to say this. But God has been waiting for you so that you do not only speak about your faith, but your commitment must be shown in the works. Your commitment must be shown in your deeds. Your commitment must be shown in your actions. Those that are in relationships, there are times you make phone calls and say, you don't love me. And say, why? But I love you. But say, no, you don't love me. Why do you say you don't love me? Why? Because you've never called me. You've spent four months without calling me. I've never seen you. But, I, I, but I'm busy. You don't love me. No, what I'm saying is that you, 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 you do love me, but you don't have commitment towards the love that you're speaking about. And the problem with the Christian faith is that we are able to pronounce too much of the faith, but we can't live in accordance to the faith. 
Hello, just place your fingers. We are, we are able to trust God for provision. How can you trust God for provision if you don't have the same path faith? Because you can't trust God for provision if you can't release your only to God. You can't trust God for provision when Elijah shows up and he says, please bake the bread for me. Even if you have only a little flour and a small oil for you, for your son, and you and your son to eat and die, but you still need to trust me and still cook the same bread. You still smell the same bread and you still smell the same oil, but you allow me to eat without you eating and you are hungry. You are only full of the smell. Why? Because your faith must be committed. Singing is not enough. You, you can pray. Go and ask Jesus according to Matthew chapter 4. When he finished praying for 40 days and 40 nights, commitment must come. Let me submit this to you tonight. After every prayer, every prayer must be followed by commitment. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. Some of you are trusting God for tenders. But your commitment is not a tender commitment. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, where is your commitment? Neighbor, where is your commitment? It's good to shout, the just shall live by faith. Hey. Who are the just? The poles of this world. Yeah. Who will say, I need to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what is waiting for me in Jerusalem, but the Holy Spirit, I have had the Holy Spirit testifying in other cities that chains and tribulations await me, but there is ministry that needs to be done. I know chains and tribulations are awaiting, but I'm still going to Jerusalem because of the faith. I cannot deny the faith now. I cannot deny the faith when I'm at the end. My faith must be followed by my commitment. What is my commitment? When I know that chains are waiting for me, when I know that there's tribulation, when I know that there's hunger, when I know that there's criticism, when I know that there's tribulation awaiting me, but I keep on walking in faith, I keep on standing in faith, I keep on believing God and believe God and believe God and believe God. Why? I stand on my commitment. Somebody shout and say, Commitment! You are too shaken by this. And it's not, oh my God, it's not that God can do it. God cannot do it if you're not positioned. Yeah, true. Let me say it this way. True. God cannot do it if you're not rooted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Simon means a reed. Hello? Jesus says, your name shall never be called Simon, but your name shall be called Peter, which is called a rock. Then he says, upon this rock, I, God, I will build my church. I said, God, why do you want to build church on the rock? He says, I can't build church on something that is shaken. Because it's not about the roof. It's not about the walls. It's not about the church. It's not about the light. The foundation must be the rock. The foundation must be stable in life. Because when, even though they take the roof, even though the storms come and the roofs are blown away, even though they bring load shedding, but they will never touch the foundation. Even though they steal the chest, but they will never touch the foundation. Why? There is commitment in the foundation. I am built on the rock. God ministered to me on Monday about Penina. It says Hannah continued to go to Shiloh in the midst of Penina. Yeah. Hey. And her prayers when she was in Shiloh were never God to kill Penina. Uh -uh. Because God is not about to do a miracle in the absence of Penina. Yeah. Your Penina must still be present. Actually, God is injecting more life on your Penina. So that your Penina must keep you down on your knees. So that your foundation must be strong in the midst of your Penina. And the problem with the church is that you are praying too much for your Penina. You are focusing too much on your Penina. You are talking too much about your Penina. Yet your faith has no commitment. You are committed about Penina. Yet you are not committed about faith. And God said, I'm submit to you tonight. Forget about your pain. Stop focusing on your pain. Let your foundation be strengthened. Hallelujah. Samuel was born in the midst of pain. Hello? 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 It's like Hannah. 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 Do 
not fret about the wicked. Do not worry about the wicked. Do not worry about what they have. Whether they drive in fleshy cars, but they are still wicked. Whether they live in beautiful houses, but they are still wicked. What I have deposited in you, my daughter Hannah, it is going to surpass whatever. But I know Pina has given birth to ten children, but one seed of yours will surpass the ten children. One seed of yours will have more impact than the church Caesar that she saw. You just trust me in the one seed. But before you give birth to Samuel, I need your commitment to the Savior. Yeah. Some of you, your, your commitment shakes. Because your commitment is too much to your God. Your commitment is too, too, too much attached to your feelings. Let me say it again. I want to help you. Your commitment is too much attached to your feelings. That's why when, when certain people don't treat you the way you want to be treated, you don't talk to them. Because you are too much attached to your feelings. You're child. When you're a child of God, the flesh dies. Hallelujah. You don't operate in the flesh anymore. You operate in the spirit. Hey. Yeah. Mm. You don't operate in the flesh anymore. Amen. The flesh in desires dies. Yeah, true. You do not message. You do not conform to the standards of the world anymore. Yes. Hello? Hello? Revenge is a standard of the world. <laughs> hey, you're right. Gossip is a standard of the world. Hey, Hatred is a standard of the world. Hello? Hello? I shared a scripture on my WhatsApp status yesterday. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 14. Just be patient with them all. And ask God, which, which are them all? The rude, the adulterous. Be patient with them all. Why? Because you don't operate in the flesh anymore. You ah. operate in the spirit. I said, God, but why are you ministering to me about patience? He says, because I was patient with you also. Yeah. Where you are right now, it is the result of my patience. Yeah. It is not the result of your power. It is the result of my commitment to my patience with you. If I was not patient with you, I should have killed you. Actually, right now, you don't deserve to stand on the pulpit and preach to my people. It's because I'm still patient with you. Yeah. You are too much attached to your feelings. You are operating in your feelings. <laughs> That's why your block list in your phone. Shh. <laughs> you are too much. You are, you are a Christian, but you are going to hell, Papa. Because you are in the flesh. You need a re-baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then you must be you must go to a class and be taught the things of the spirit, how the spirit operates. Yeah. 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 Because if you're still taking off your Christianity and addressing people and put on your Christian, which Christianity is that? Because once a Christian, always a Christian for life. Whether change or tribulations, you are always a Christian. Shake your neighbor as a neighbor. You are too much attached to your feelings. Hello? You see, you see, you see, you see, you see. That's why the Bible says, when your enemy gives a clap on one cheek, give him the other cheek. Cut the limbs out. Cut the You see, you see, you, you know why you don't want to come? You are too much attached to your feelings. With you. If I give you a clap, pain. what will you feel? Pain. Huh? Pain. What is pain? pain? Of the spirit of the flesh. Of the flesh. Hey. You see, you know why you're saying no? Because I'm asking you. But when the enemy comes, he does not ask you. He gives you a clap on the other side. And many of you, when he gives you a clap on the other side, when you but the eyes broke. <laughs> You said there is no God anymore. But when the enemy gives you other things, the enemy, bring it on again. Yeah. Why? Because I've got commitment to my faith. Yeah. I am not a weakling. Yeah. Yeah. The problem our churches are full on Sundays, but they are full of weaklings. Yeah. Come on. That's why you keep a pastor praying for me. Pastor this, pastor this. But where is your faith? 
And unfortunately, the issues of faith has nothing to do with your age. Yeah. You can still be four years old, yet you're faith. Yeah. Eliab was the handsome, the eldest in the family. But if a lion had to appear, he would run away. Yeah. David was the youngest in the family. But because he was rooted in the faith, the bear came, the lion came, he bent it apart. Now watch this. As we close, just give me some time. And then we close. Listen. Verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be God. He says, What? Talk to me, church. He says, What? Blessed be God. Now, I want you to watch this. Go, go study scripture. I don't have time for it right now. Go study scripture. It will show you that when he was saying this, he was still in the plane of Judah. Okay. Where the image was. Wow, yeah. The same image where people are supposed to bow. Yeah. But he says, Blessed be God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> faith that changes situation. Yeah. What? Who the one your faith can change anything. Your faith can change water into wine. Your faith can change whatever you want change in your life right now. It can be changed in accordance with your faith. It does not be changed by what you see. It is changed according to your faith. Amen. Okay, let's watch scripture. He says, Blessed be God. Of who? Of Remember what we talked on Sunday? That you, you are not operating in faith until your faith has a testimony in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Now, now listen, listen, listen. Because, oh God, let me submit this to you. Faith is personal. Yeah. Faith is not for the good. Uh -uh. Now, watch. The Bible does not say, Blessed be God of the Hebrew boys. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Abraham, because you gave me your only son. Now I know. And that's why the book of Hebrews chapter 11 is full of heroes of faith. By faith Enoch, by faith Moses, by faith Sarah, and by faith. Everything is by faith. But you is by sight. <laughs> and the problem with our generation is that we will read a new Bible. Everything must be by sight, by faith, by faith. By... Hello? Now watch this. He says, he spoke this man. And I want to remember, remember I just this. Where the word of a king is? Oh, wow. He spoke and he said, Blessed be God of Shad. When will your enemy speak and celebrate your God? Because your enemy will never celebrate your God unless your enemy has tested your commitment to your faith. Amen. Some of you are going through storms right now, not because you have to go through it, because the enemy must test your standing. Hello? Enemy must still test whether are you still a member of Catholic Christian Church even next year when 2019 treats you this way. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Genesis 22. And, and the Lord said to himself, He needed to test Abraham. Yeah. But Abraham never knew he was going to a test. Hey. <laughs> the God of who? Oh, Let's read together. The God of who? Oh, and who? And who? And okay, now, this God sent his angel. Yeah. Yes. Now, I, I want you to see the order of things. He sent his angels. Mm -hmm. He sent his angel to do what? <laughs> to deliver his servants. Mm -hmm. You're getting ahead of <laughs> He delivered them. He, he sent the angel. Yeah. Hello? He was not about to send the angel when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were outside the fire. Come on. Yeah. Because the, if the angel shows up when they're outside the fire, he's got no relevance. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Oh my God. Now, he sent the angel. Someone say he sent the angel. He sent the angel. Someone say he sent the angel. He sent the angel. So which means that when the angel was sent, he was sent with a mandate. Yeah. And the mandate is, oh, let take hello. The, the angel was sent with a mandate to deliver. Oh, now watch. He says, and delivered his servants. The angel was not sent for anything. 
for deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Someone say deliverance. deliverance. You can only deliver someone who's in trouble. Yeah. 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 Now, therefore, if the angels are sent for deliverance and they arrive at the fire and you're not there, whom do they deliver? Then the angels must go back to the sender mm. and say, we did not find him. Then the sender must ask himself, who delivered it? If I did not deliver you. That's a question. Who delivered you if God did not deliver you? Okay, let me submit this to you. Whoever delivers you will rule you for the rest of your life. Let me leave you. That must sink in your spirit for some time. Whoever delivers you, you will be their subject for the rest of your life. There are some people that are calling on your phone now. You can't afford to miss that call. You must always be available for them. Why? Because they delivered you at some point where God was supposed to deliver you. And, 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 and now we, you, you are fine, you are safe and we think it's God but it was not God and God says you shall worship no other God but you believe you have God and it's not that you do what I'm going to faith but you have a God she's your God, he's your God that thing is your God, your car is your God this thing that you've got God around you because they delivered you. And when God sent the angel, you were not there. Let's pack it before we get into other things. He delivered his servant. Now, number two, that did what? That did what? I talked to Misha. That did what? Which, which, which means the expectation of the deliverance of God is based on the trust in God. Am I talking to somebody tonight? I want to give somebody tonight. I want to encourage somebody tonight. In the midst of the fire, trust God. Amen. Trust God. Hey, I don't care how long God delays. Trust God. Amen. Trust God. Believe God. Trust God. Always trust. Never lose your trust in God. You can lose your trust upon people. You can lose your trust upon things. But always trust God. If He said He will deliver you, even though He does not come this year, even though He does not come next year, even though He does not come tomorrow, but the God that I serve, He will always come to end the appointed time. Trust God, shut up, wish I can have a nickel. The, the, the king is speaking after they came out of the fire and they said, I have never seen in all of Babylon, I have never seen men like this. When I created the image, I call governors, but I call governors who don't have a God. I call princesses, but they never had a God. I call people of power and authority, but these young men are ordinary men, are just mere boys, but they are boys who trust in God. You can be a young person with a difference. You can be a mother and a father with a difference. A mother and a father, a human being who trust God. Leave a legacy for your family. Leave a legacy for your children. What is this legacy? This is the legacy that Paul spoke about to Timothy. And he says, The faith that I see in you, and I know this faith. I saw it in your grandmother Louisa. I saw it in your mother. Now I see it in you. It was a legacy of trusting God. What shall you be? What shall you be known for? How shall you be remembered? But my mother was a clever. My mother used to make plans, but never trusted God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they left a legacy in Babylon to trust in God. Amen. And you can trust God when you have it all. You can trust God when everything is ticking the boxes. You trust God when nothing looks like it's going to work out. When there is no hope lost. When there is hope lost. When there is nothing working out. The future looks like it's the head has got nothing for you. But you can still stand and say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the rushes run to it. And they are saying, I will trust God. Amen. Amen. Trust God with a barren womb. 
Trust God when there is no proposal. Trust God when there is no business. Trust God, trust God when they are not even calling you for employment, baby. Trust God, trust God when they are divorcing you. Trust God, trust God when they say we can't employ you anymore. In the midst of retrenchment, I want to speak to somebody tonight in, in, in this day of recharge. Oh, he said, trust God, may your trust in God be recharged tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Trust God. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. They shall never be moved. Isaiah says, for they that trust in the Lord shall run and not be weary. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. But you can only do it when you trust. People will disappoint you. They also disappointed God. And God washed away the earth with water in the days of Noah. And he thought it was over. But after the days of Noah, this is the days after Noah, things have become ten times worse. Because people will disappoint you. I want you to talk to you, baby. Do not trust on people. Don't put your trust on people. Trust God! Yeah, yeah. I was just, he, his servants that trusted in him. Now, watch what happens. Why do you trust God? Scripture, it's not me. Scripture. And they, and have changed. <laughs> You're not hearing scripture. And they have changed. The king's word. The king spoke another word. Where the word of the king is. And <laughs> never knew that there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that served the living God, that served the king of kings. And they changed the king's word because they trusted God. The king said, People must bow. The, the king said, There is no other God that will be served in all of Babylon. But the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and say, King, you are in for a surprise. You can stand, my dear sister. You can stand, my dear brother. Whatever the enemy is throwing against you, you can change the king's word. Your faith can change the situation. Your faith can change everything around. Only when you trust God. I don't care what the king has said. I don't care what Sir Ramaphosa has said. I don't care what economy is saying. I don't care how the doctor's report is saying. I don't care what your job is saying. I don't care what your family is saying. Oh, but when you trust God, you can change the king's word. You can change the king's word. And tonight, you have come that the king's word must be changed. Tonight, you are not living with the same word that the king has spoken about you. I hear the Lord says there are people in the house. The king has spoken the word upon your life. But when you trust the name of the Lord, when you trust the God that I serve, when you trust El Shaddai, when you trust Elohim, when you trust Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah is the king's word can change. I say the king's word can change. I say the king's word can change. I say the king's word can change. What is it that has not been changing in your life tonight? When your faith has been committed, when your faith has been strengthened, when your faith has been healed, the king's word. I say the king's word. I say the king's word can be changed. Where the word of the king is, there is power. 
No one can turn back against the word of the king. And the Bible calls Jesus the king of kings. Who are the kings that Jesus is the king to? You are the kings that Jesus is the king to. The same power that Jesus uses is the same power that you can use. Because when you speak, things must change. When you speak, demons must tremble. When you speak, you must irritate the principalities in the spirit. You must irritate the witches in the spirit. You don't get scared of these things. You don't You don't take the tail between your knees and start to run away. Why? Because you know not you, 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 you must tell the enemy not in my presence, you can do these things in my absence, not in my presence you can do these things when my family is around, not when I'm here, if I'm here, things are bound to change if I'm here, they will not drink, if I'm here they will not fornicate, if I'm here they will not do what they're doing, and they're asking why are you not doing what we do as normal but the king is here, why? because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they are here to change You need the faith to change your situation. Amen. You don't need plans. Hey. You're wasting your energy in making plans. Stop making plans. Inject your faith with energy. Amen. Your faith must be alive Amen. to change situations. Somebody's here tonight. The contract is about to end. <laughs> Chief, that thing can change. I said that thing can change. I said they will call you. Not according to the word that I'm speaking. No, according to your faith. Amen. Amen. Peter and John, by the beautiful gate, they found a man who was crippled. He was begging. His faith was a begging faith. And they said, silver and gold, we have none. But such as we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up according to faith. That people, have been, people have been giving you money. And the same, you are excited for the money, but the same money is suppressing you, is oppressing you. It's putting you in the same situation. You think you are succeeding. You are not succeeding. You are just the same person. They are oppressing you, oppressing you. They are getting a hold over you. Jump out of that place. Jump out of that cocoon. Break the camp. And say, I'm tired of to operating in accordance to how other people dictate upon my life. It's time. God-given faith. Amen. The Bible says, and they changed the king's word. Somebody say, change the king's word. Change the king's word. Somebody say, change the king's word. Lift up your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The king's word will be changed in my life. In the name of Jesus. Every word that has been decreed upon my life that is negative is about to be changed in accordance with my faith. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare war upon every word that has been declared upon my life. I am changing it in the name of Jesus. I am changing it in the name of Jesus. Say I am changing it in the name. I am changing it in the name. I am changing it in the name of Jesus. You are so much in need, you are compromising your standards. Even bribes happen in your in your in your presence. They say, but I'm a son of Shango, but as you shall know, nobody will hear all. See, no, these are things of this world. We operate in corruption and bribe, but the things of this world are not your destination. They're not where you're going. Where you're going, bribe does not happen. 
And we think you're making money. You're not making money. You're making money out of the standard of the world. Which means your money is cursed. They yielded their bodies. Can you die for your faith? Is where they, they have to hide to have church, yeah. and you think it's obvious to have church. Yeah. That's why sometimes you, you just see him today. Let me be holy tomorrow, no, because you can't die for faith. Can you die for the faith? That's why we don't have visions anymore because no one is ready to die for the faith. We all compromise in the name of grace. for your accolades. I'm here to give you the word of God. They yielded their bodies. Are you hearing me, young people? Yes. They yielded their bodies that they might not save. Now, now watch this, watch this. Sorry. But I'm taking you know, when you say, you sign your contract in private and you still walk in public and no one knows, no one knows that when you part an, you're part of an occult. No one knows that you serve the devil. You, you've got dead free. You look like you're still complete. But things are not, you don't have connection. You, you look, you, you dress the part, but you don't fit the part. You preach the part, you're shirty. People think there's an anointing. There is no anointing. Because you've got no connection. Why? Because you are serving other gods. Because this, this young boys, they gave their lives not to serve any other God. The, oh God, they could 
would have chosen to serve and no one would have known. But there will never be a heaven in the Bible. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. But when your faith changes things, your name must be recorded. Yeah. Wow. Even if they don't like, they must speak about you. Because you did them out of the ordinary. You never went to the masses. You never went to the majority. Yeah. Just because people are doing things, I don't mean that it's permissible. It's on. Bible says everything is permissible, but not all things are beneficial. Yeah. Which God are you saying? The capital letter or the small letter? Are you not saving money? Are you not saving your marriage? Are you not saving your friendship? That's why when your friendship is not in church, you are also not in church. It tells us whom you are serving. Joshua says, let it be known. As for me and my house, me and my house, we will. As long as you live here, we will. As long as you come in here, we will. Say God, no compromise. We will. Whether there's food on the table, we will. Why? Because there's commitment to the faith. Because we have seen this faith. That this faith can change things. That's why Paul says, "I am bound by the Spirit to come to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me there." But I'm still going because the faith that I have changes situations. If they killed my God, therefore I can have a time like with Jesus. Why are you compromising the faith? It has become so normal to compromise faith. I can still have it. I'm not even caught it. I can still appear with Milano on social media. I say, babe. I still come and preach. No one will question anything. Why? Because even the church compromises. Compromise is not outside, it's in the church. I, I, when the church knows I'm not married, I'm in love of my life. Born of my And no one, no one, no one will question it. And we call this the old time religion. But I fear, my friends, I am scared. I don't want to let you. I am scared. I'm also scared for myself of where we are taking the gospel with the, with the today's generation. We're good at quoting scripture, but we don't live scripture. Yeah, yeah. Posting on Facebook, we are good at it, but it is not in us. Yeah, hey. This Go check our WhatsApp status. Mm. They are busy pronouncing things that are not in us. Yeah, this all. It's like people who market BMW here, they drive Mercedes Benz. Hey. Mm. How do you market a church that you are out of it? Hey. How do you market a car that you can't drive? You're leading us to you're leading us astray away now. And it is started here. If I'm not excluding myself, that's the compromise, compromising the faith. You're talking about the faith to believe for a million, for seven million, that faith we have. But to walk in faith, to live in faith. Therefore, how do you want to operate to pull something with something that you don't live according to? Ooh. Lord, what did you bring me here tonight? Faith. You, when you go home, introspect yourself. Are you truly living in faith? Can your faith change things? Can you stand a head on condition with the devil? I say, live. Say, how do you live? How do you chase me when we are together on Monday? Tuesday, we are together. But when Sunday comes, you want to chase me away. When I feed you with money, I feed you with life, but you want to chase me. No, when I live, we live together. Because we are of the same, we have the same family. Mm-hmm. 
Let's pray as we're seated. 